Hi guys, this is attorney Sharifa Tharb and I am live to take your immigration questions. So go ahead and drop your questions in the comments. I thought I would share uh, some of my Saturday night with you and answer your questions. So feel free to drop any immigration related questions that you may have in the comments and I will gladly answer them. So. I usually come with a topic and today I'm going to talk about immediate relatives of US citizens who can um, apply for the green card based on that relationship with a US citizen. That's a question I get often. So not everyone is the immediate relative of a US citizen. Um, and the reason that it is uh, such a desirable um, type of category to be in is because it's a faster process green card process and um, so you you take as the immediate relative of a US citizen you take priority in the immigration process so who are now before I start explaining uh, what that means and the process I want to let you know that I'm here for you. I'm here to answer your immigration questions. So go ahead and drop your questions in the comments and then I will go ahead and answer those questions. I'll stop talking about the topic I'm talking about to answer your immigration questions. So as I talk, just go ahead and type your questions in the comments and I will stop doing what I'm doing, answer your question. So for those of you who don't know, I'm immigration attorney Sharif Atharb and I uh, come on uh, as much as often as I can every night on a good week. I come on every single night. Um, so if you follow me, uh, then you will get noticed that I'm live and then you can hop on and ask your questions. If you'd like to learn more about me, you can go to the link in my bio. It's going to take you to my website where uh, we, where it talks about me, the cases that I take, and what I've done. And you can also get in touch with me through the website. So, who is the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen? So, immediate relatives of a U.S. citizen are... Shay was here. So how often are you live? I aim to come on every night. Um, so for the past week, I've not come on every night, um, but uh, because it was such a busy week, but I aim to come on every night. So what you can do is if you, um, I know Shay was here. I've seen you on um, live before. So hopefully you're following me and that way you can hop on um, whenever you get noticed that I'm live. As uh, so a user 870, how long uh, you get the green card after fail? Um, I'm not sure uh, what, what you mean by that. Um, can you just clarify that question? I'm, it may be uh, there's, it's not complete. So just okay so you just called so great uh one thing i want you to know is that um it's after hours it's the weekend so it's an a receptionist that answers and af after hours receptionist answer the phone and uh, that there is a scheduling receptionist that will call you on the next business day on monday and schedule the consultation with me so just hang tight and um the, the scheduling coordinator will get back to you and and discuss um, the consultation schedule and um, confirm with you so we can talk. Thanks for calling. I'm looking forward to talking to you. So, um, so yeah, so user 870, please, um, can you explain your question a little more so I can understand where you're coming from? So, um, as I'm waiting for more of your questions to come in, um, I'm going to keep talking about the, 
Oh, Monifa. Okay, Monifa. So I'm looking forward to talking to you, Monifa. Asha Cher was here. Can my sibling toggle between US and Canada? I think that's Canada on H2 visa until her green card is received. Is that uh, legal? So is your, it depends on what the situation is. Um, so if she's on the H2 visa, um, that means that she has, she got the, she has the green card through a parent um, who has the, uh, is that the H1B visa? So, um, you know, it really depends on what the situation is. Uh, it is a non-immigrant visa, so, you know, it, there is no requirement um, for the, per, the person on the H-2 visa to be um, permanently in the U.S., right? It's for the purpose of um, being here with the uh, U.S. parent and um, carrying all, you know, so it, it really depends. I... I I wouldn't want to definitely tell you whether it's permissible or not until I get the full story. So what you can do is give me a call at 561-405-4889. You can um, go to my website also if you miss that number and get my number there. And then we can talk more about what the situation is and um, who is applying for her green card. Um, so there, there are a number. There is a number of things going on here. So she has an H two visa, but then um, she sounds like she's part time here, part time in in uh, Canada, and there is a green card application pending. So I'd want to um, figure out what's going on there before I say whether this is permissible or not. Um, one thing I will say is that um, she definitely has to be cautious because um, while this type of visa is, is a temporary visa, um, there should not be any kind of immigrant intent, meaning an intent to live permanently in the United States. And so if um, she's moving back and forth with a pending green card application, there could be a conflict there. Um, coming into the US and then finding a pending green card application. So I would want to figure out um, what's going on more. Okay, uh, let's see. So she was here, her mother is petitioning for her. And then the H2 visa, who is it through? Oh, okay. So the, oh, okay. 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 Right. Okay. So the B2 visa. Yes. So, um, her mom, how old is she? Is she under 21 or is she, um, she was here. I'm talking to you. So is she under 21 and is her mom a U.S. citizen? Um, those are some of the things I'd want to know now so I can answer your question. All right, so 870, um, let me see. I see you followed up here. Um, so failed document. Um, 870, I still don't know what the failed document is. Um, is it that they didn't accept a document? So you got rejected because you didn't, uh, let me see, how long you need to wait after to send the document? Oh, okay, file the documents. Okay, I understand now. So after you file the documents, so file the documents, I think that's what you mean. Just let me know. So um, 870, how long do you have to wait after you file the documents? Let me see. So I would, it depends on the type of green card application you're applying for. So 870, can you follow up with that? So if you're applying through a US citizen spouse, a US citizen parent and you're under 21 and unmarried, 
or uh, if you're the parent of a U.S. citizen, it's uh, safe to say it can take up to two years, but less than that. I've seen as short as nine months, and I've seen as um, as long as two years or even over two years. So it really depends on what kind of um, application you're filing. So how long does a green card take when I marry my wife and I stay in the U.S. and wait for residency? So Carlo um, Lazar, La, La Rosa, um, if your wife is a U.S. citizen, then you're looking at about a year and a half to two years. And that's just an average. It could be shorter and it could possibly be longer. It depends on the processing time at your particular um, field office that will be processing your adjustment of status application. So um, now if your wife is not a US citizen and if you've fallen out of status, then there's gonna be a little more involved. Um, so you want to make sure that you, um, if that is the case, your wife is not a US citizen and you've fallen out of status, you will not qualify to apply for the green card in the United States. You have to go to your country, but before that, you have to make sure that you won't be barred from returning to the United States. So it all depends. What is uh, the time processing for I-130? So what you can do is if you go to uscis.gov and you uh, look at the field office that has is processing your I-130, you'll be able to see what the processing time is. It could be eight months to a year, that's the average, but it could be shorter or longer, depending on where it's processing your application. Okay, so 870, you're married to an American. Okay, so I would say, it, it prepare for up to two years, but it could be shorter. What I would say is when you're filing the application initially, make sure that you do everything correctly, that you attach all the relevant evidence, include all the relevant forms, and that could reduce the delays in your application. Because I find sometimes when there's um, less evidence attached to the forms, then there, um, the case can be delayed. I've even seen cases where, because so little evidence was attached to the application, it went in, they went in for the interview within a short period of time, and then it's afterwards that a year passed, a year and a half passed, where the officer is still reviewing the case because all the evidence wasn't included. Hi, sexy Tommy Wan, always nice to see you. So you have a sibling in the US, but not my parents, only brothers and sisters. So your siblings, if they're US citizens, they can apply for you to get the green card. Um, it's just that it's taking about 14 years. Um, so it's taking a while. Okay, so she was here over 21. And the, the mom is a green card holder. All right. So this is it. Um, that is my least favorite question to answer. The reason being, it can go either way. So it's going to take a while. Um, let me see, she's over 21. So that process is taking about five and a half years. Um, because of the length of time that is taking to process these applications and the fact that um, if, if she stays in the United States, she would uh, compromise her green card. They may not give her any problems going back and forth between Canada. And I've seen more people than not moving back and forth. Now, is she a Canadian? Is she a Canadian citizen? If she is, then she can stay here for um, six months as a Canadian. But if not, then of course she has to abide by the visa and what it says in her stamp. Now, another way it could go is the officer could look and um, at the border, could look and say, well, they think she has Im immigrant intent to stay in the United States and not 
allow her to go in. So it could go either way. So she has to approach with caution. What I would say is um, staying six months in the U.S., staying part-time in the U.S., part-time in Canada, that uh, may be a little risky. Coming across on short visits, not so much, but when you're basically becoming a part-time resident on a B-2 visa, that does get risky because the officer will track that and realize what um, she's doing and may um, deny her entry into the U.S. based on, on that. They'll determine that she is uh, trying to live in the United States. Um, so she So can someone with a work visa file I-485 if they're being petitioned by um, their parent? So it depends. So she was here, it depends on the type of employment visa. Um, but it's uh, the, the questions here are going into complicated territory um, just because the outcome or my advice really depends on your particular circumstances. So what you can do is give me a call at 561-405-4889. Then I can talk more about um, what your particular circumstances are. Because um, when it comes down to filing adjustment of status, you have to be careful at, along with the work visa. It depends on what type of work visa. It depends on the circumstances involved. But you have to be very careful, especially with um, a green card holder parent, it's not a US citizen and she's over 21, you want to make sure that you do everything correctly so that you don't compromise the process, um, the green card process. So you can give me a call. I'm gonna say my number again and I'm gonna type it in the comments and give me a call. You will, on, on after hours and the weekend, of course, You'll get the after hours receptionist, but um, during weekdays between 8.30 and 6.30, you'll more than likely speak to the scheduling coordinator who will get you on my schedule, get you confirmed for an appointment with me, and then we can delve into all the nitty gritty details involved. Diva Nine Queen, thanks so much for sharing my life. Okay, so you uh, Diva Nine Queen, you file all together, but the travel letter isn't coming. So we've seen a backlog in in um, you know, if you're talking about the travel documents, um, you know, it, we've seen a backlog. You can expect that within six to eight months um, if you're talking about the travel document. So great questions, keep those questions coming. Um, what, what I came in talking about, so Sexy Tommy One, so if I'm in the USA, would it be so long? Yes, yes, actually, and almost nine months. So uh, Diva Nine Queen, yeah, unfortunately there is a backlog. What you can do is check on your case, call in and see, make sure that everything is okay with your case and um, find out what's going on with the, the long processing time. Um, so Sexy Tommy, yes. As a matter of fact, if you came to the US and overstayed your visa, what will hap would happen is that you would compromise your um, green card uh, process because you would, have, you would have to wait for those 14 years and then apply for a waiver um, and so, it, you know, that process, there's no quick solution. As a matter of fact, it just makes it um, more complicated. So, um, all right, so keep those questions coming. I want to hear your questions. So what I came in talking about was um, being the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen. And um, that means that you are, so it's J, overstay like five or six months. 
So if you overstay your visa, okay. So um, Diva Nine Queen, did you submit the travel document application? And um, if you did, you want to check on the status of that. And um, it's J. So if you apply, if you overstay by five or six months, then you will be, if you leave the United States, you will be barred for, um, let's say six months. If So over six months, 180 days, you will be barred for, um, uh, three years and then if you overstay by a year that's a 10-year bar and then you'd have to apply for forgiveness which is a waiver to be able to come back to the united states and get a green card which is never um guaranteed so uh sexy tommy one well i have to be going to find a way because i can't bother with jamaica because jamaica is not good i know i <laughs> I know it's 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 tough it's it's tough sometimes it's tough in Jamaica I get it so keep your questions coming I was talking about being the immediate relative of a US citizen those are the individuals who can stay in the United States as long as they came in with a green card that and it over they overstayed um, not a green card, I'm sorry, a visa, and overstay the visa, they can come to the United States, apply for the green card while being in the United States, and stay here in the U.S. while the process is complete. This is the spouse of a U.S. citizen, the parent of a U.S. citizen, or the child under 21 and, um, and unmarried of a U.S. citizen. They, would, they could qualify for the adjustment of status process. So um, that is why it is such a desirable category to be in. And that's why some people wait until they become US citizens to sponsor their spouse or their parents or um, their, their child. So keep those questions coming. I want to see your questions. Um, I am finished with the topic that I came to talk about, but if you, no, no, it's not, um, sexy Tommy, it would not be for you. You would have to be, first of all, you would have to be in the United States, um, and you would have had to have, um, negative history, immigration history, which nobody wants. So you, you wouldn't want to go through the waiver process. Some people don't have a choice, but you wouldn't want to do that. Um, so I am try to be here, um, every night at least. Uh, so go ahead and, um, follow me. And as soon as you see me again, you can, um, hop on, ask your immigration questions. I'm going to close out. Thank you for all your questions. And, um, if you would like to schedule a consultation, just go to the link in my bio. You'll see my phone number and everything you need to get in touch. Uh, with me sexy Tommy if in order to evaluate all your circumstances we would have to um, schedule a consultation so um, she was here um, n400 requires three years of holding a green card if you are married if you got your green card through a US citizen spouse and you um, I stayed with that spouse for the three full three years. Otherwise, it's five years to get your green card. She was here. Well, that eight months going towards the requirements. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, she was here. I don't know if it's something that you said earlier. So the eight months, I think um, I earlier I mentioned that the eight months is um, the processing time, six to eight months for the work permit. 
um, so I think that's what you may have heard so if it takes eight months to get a green card will it count towards the requirements no so it's not necessarily eight months to get the green card it could be as little as eight as nine months I've seen as little as nine months but it will not take eight months it usually takes about eight months to get the work permit and travel document while you wait for the green card um, you'll be really lucky if you got your green card in eight months um, but I've seen as little as nine months um, but the, no the time before so the, the time requirement to get the citizenship starts at the point that you get that green card you are granted permanent residence all right thank you for all your questions and i will see you tomorrow have a good night everyone